Hey friends, and welcome back to the channel. And welcome to another episode of The Book Club. In this one, we're going to be talking about Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less by Greg McCune. This book shows a new way of thinking about productivity and life. It's a disciplined, systematic approach to determine where your highest points of contribution lie, and then making the execution of those points almost effortless. Only when you give yourself permission to stop trying to do it all and stop trying to please everyone, you can create space for the things that really matter. It's less, but better. This is the way of the essentialist. And the essentialist pursues this principle in a disciplined way. More than a principle, it's a way of living. It's living by design, not by default. So the way of the essentialist is to distinguish the vital few from the trivial many, to eliminate the non-essentials and remove obstacles. And so we arrive at the essentialist approach. This is a three-step cycle that you can apply consistently to reap greater and greater benefits. Step number one is to explore and evaluate. First, you want to spend as much time as possible exploring listening, debating, thinking over things. Exploration is not the end itself, but a way to distinguish the vital few from the trivial many. After this, you go to two, eliminate. In this step, you're gonna actively eliminate activities and efforts that don't make the highest possible contribution. Once you've done that, you can move to step number three, to execute. By exploring and evaluating and then eliminating the non-essentials, what's left are the vital few. So it's time to execute on those vital few. You're gonna invest the time that you have saved with the two previous steps into creating a system for removing obstacles and making execution as easy as possible. So in the essentialist approach, these three elements are not separate events. They are a cyclical, never-ending process. So when you apply the essentialist approach consistently, you reap greater and greater benefits. And in the book, Greg offers a few ways to help you in your essentialist journey. I'm gonna highlight the ones that resonated with me the most. Number one, the 820 rule. Also known as the Pareto Principle or the Law of the Vital Few, the 820 rule states that for many of the outcomes, roughly 80% of the consequences come from 20% of the causes, the vital few. In other words, the little things are the ones that account for the majority of your results. And what I really like about this mental model is that it forces you to ask questions that you wouldn't consider otherwise. It's a constant reminder of where your focus and time is and where you think it should actually be. So for example, you could ask yourself, are 20% of your tasks bringing you 80% of your results? And once the 80-20 rule is something that you use naturally in your life, you're gonna be scanning your environment at all times for ways to apply it. You're constantly asking yourself, where should my focus be? The 80-20 rule is great to discern what you should be doing on your day to day. But to go a level up from that and focus on your life in general, you need to craft your essential intent. In a few words, your essential intent is one decision that makes 1,000 later decisions. Once you have crafted your essential intent, all subsequent decisions come into better focus. To craft your essential intent, you need to ask yourself two questions. First, if I could be truly excellent at one thing, what would it be? And second, how will I know when I have succeeded? And once you have crafted your essential intent, you can eliminate any activity that is misaligned with what you're intending to achieve. The 90% rule is a very simple technique to help you decide if you should or should not pursue an activity. First, you're gonna think about the single most important criterion for a decision. Now you're gonna score the new opportunity that you have from zero to 100. And if your number is any lower than 90%, you're gonna automatically change the rating to zero and reject that new opportunity. This helps you avoid getting caught up with indecision or even worse, getting stuck in the 60s or 70s. So the 90% rule quickly helps you understand if you have a total conviction to do something. If it's not 90 or higher, you simply do not pursue that opportunity. And that leads us to the next technique, which is extreme criteria. Here's the reality. Choosing what to go after is harder when opportunities come to us. So you need a systematic process to apply selective criteria for opportunities that come your way. Here's the exercise that you can do. First, you're gonna write down the opportunity. Second, you're gonna think of three minimum criteria that the new opportunity must pass to be considered. And three, you're gonna write down three extreme criteria that the new opportunity must once again pass to be considered. And if the new opportunity doesn't pass two out of three of your extreme criteria, then the answer is no. This is another technique that you can use to very quickly understand what opportunities you need to pursue and what opportunities you need to pass. But what happens when 
when you're confronted by somebody else. In those moments, you need to learn how to say no with grace. Saying no, it's his own skill. And like any other skill, you start with limited experience, but you can get better over time. In the book, Greg offers a lot of effective ways to say no. I'm simply gonna talk about the two that resonated with me the most. The first one is to create a pause. So when someone is trying to schedule something with you, you default by saying, let me check my calendar and get back to you. And this is a great strategy because it gives you time to think and assess your priorities. So you're taking control of your decisions rather than being rushed into a yes. And the second one is a matter of priorities. For example, let's say that your week is already jam packed and now your boss is trying to give you a little bit more work or maybe get you to work on a new project. And you really don't wanna say no to your boss. So what you should say instead is yes, what should I deprioritize? And I really love this question from the book because not only are you not saying no to your boss, but you are making him aware that you have a lot to take on at the moment. And at the same time, you're forcing your boss with the trade-off. They are the ones choosing for you. So they can either choose the new project that they wanted you to take on, or they can take something off your plate. Either way, that's a win for you. The next tip that I really like from this book is zero-based budgeting. So what is zero-based budgeting? It's an accounting method in which all expenses must be justified and approved for each new period. And you can apply the same concept to your time. For example, each new week, you start with an empty calendar. Instead of trying to fit everything that was from the previous week, you start it with an empty calendar. Every use of your time and energy needs to be justified once again. And if it no longer fits your intention, you can eliminate it altogether. The next strategy we're gonna discuss is called reverse pilot. Reverse pilot means testing if removing an activity will bring any negative consequences. So what you wanna do is to quietly eliminate or at least scale back an activity for a few days or weeks. And this is gonna help you understand if that activity is really making a difference. For example, let's say that every week you need to do this report for your job. So now you're gonna to try to scale it down by doing it a little bit faster. And then you're gonna see if anyone notices the difference or if that thing needs to be done altogether. If you can eliminate an activity altogether, that's even better. And you might be surprised to discover that a lot of the things that you are doing, no one really cares about them. And so those are prime candidates for elimination. There is one more lesson that I wanna go over, which is the slowest hiker. An essentialist produces more, not by doing more, but by removing more. And so you need to get really good at removing obstacles. And a way that you can use that is by thinking of your slowest hiker. Instead of looking for the most obvious or immediate obstacles, you're gonna look for the ones that are slowing down your progress. To identify your slowest hiker, you're gonna make a list of all the obstacles standing between you and getting something done. Then you're gonna prioritize this list. Ask yourself, what is the obstacle that, if removed, would make all the other obstacles disappear? And you need to keep in mind that certain activities that you consider productive, like doing research or replying to email, can be your biggest obstacles. Remember the final goal that you're trying to achieve. So find your slowest hiker and remove that one obstacle that is gonna make everything else easier. And that's it for the lessons that resonated with me the most from Essentialism. It's about how to invest your time in the wisest way possible so you can operate at your highest point of contribution by doing only what is essential. So I highly recommend that you grab this book and also read all the other lessons contained in it. And once you apply all of the lessons or even just a single lesson from the book, you're gonna carve out more time for the things that really matter.